Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to your math lesson for today. <clears throat> Excuse me, for today, you will need your 5B textbook, your 5B workbook, your math resource binder, paper, and a pencil. If you need to pause and go get those things, please do so now, and then come on back and we'll get started. All right, fifth graders, we're going to do a quick warm up refresher about multiplying by 10. 100 and 1,000. So go ahead and pause. Give these a try. Come on back when you're done and see how you did. So hopefully you're remembering what we worked on with our notes. Ooh, that's glary here, right? And so when we're multiplying by tens, hundreds, thousands, it's just a matter of moving our decimal point. So when we multiply by 10, we see one zero here, so we're going to move that decimal point one to the right. So you should have 52 and 32 hundredths. And remember, when we see problems like this, I do not want you writing them vertically. I want you just to use this moving of the decimal point. So here we see two zeros, so we're going to go two zeros to the right. Remember, this is just moderately trickier because there's nothing here, but we can imagine a zero here. So we end up with 7,340. <clears throat> and here, one, two, three zeros means one, two, three spaces to the right. We end up with 1,845. Hopefully that is coming back to you pretty easily. It's going to actually build on what we're working on for today. So we're actually going to look at the inverse operation. So we worked on um, multiplying by 10, 100,000 and then multiples of. So today we're going to work on dividing by ten hundred thousand and then hint hint tomorrow we're going to look at multiples of okay so it'll be a similar formula so um these notes that i held up earlier right multiplying a decimal by tens hundreds or thousands find that in your math resource binder because on the other side there are some additional notes that we're going to take today so you want to get those out ready to go with a pencil um so as i flip you around i'm going to start kind of showing a little bit of a demonstration to build our idea. Then we're gonna take some notes together and then we'll get in and start working together in our textbook. So here we go. I'm gonna flip you around. Okay, so let's just, now if you're thinking ahead, you might have some ideas and think, well, I know what happens with multiplication and this is the inverse of multiplication, the inverse of, so we're doing the inverse operation. So. I can maybe make some educated guesses about what's going to happen. But let's just see. Let's say we're saying mm, 240 and 5 tenths divided by 10. Ultimately, we are not going to do this using long division, but I just want to show us where we're at. So remember with our rules of division, we always want to make sure that we line up the decimal point in our dividend and our quotient. So that's a good first step to be taking. So 10 does not go into 2. It goes into 24 twice. We multiply remainder of 4. Come on down, okay? 10 goes into 40 four times. We multiply remainder of 0. That 5 comes on down. It does not go into 5, okay? So we write our 0. 0 times 10 is 0. For the remainder of five, and then we add our zero, bring that down. 10 goes into 50 five times with no remainder. So as we look at these, we see that 240 divided by five equals 24 and five tenths. Do you notice any, sorry, five hundredths, excuse me. Do you notice anything comparing these two? It looks like we move that decimal point one space to the left. Was anybody thinking that? As I kind of hinted that maybe you have some ideas, some educated guesses, that when we divide by 10, we go one space to the left. Should we try another one and see if that still proves to be true with another example? What if we do, I don't know, three and five tenths divided by 10. So again, we're testing this theory. When we divide by 10, do we move the decimal point one space to the left? 
So 10 does not go into 3. It's the remainder of 3. 10 goes into 35 three times with a remainder of 5. We add our 0, bring it down. 10 goes into 50 five times with no remainder. So 3 and 5 tenths divided by 10 equals 35 hundredths. Remember, at this point, we're testing a theory. What happened with our decimal point? It went one space to the left. So if you are thinking that when we divide by 10, we go one space to the left, I think that we've proven that that's true. So let's think. Remember that our objective here is not just dividing by 10, but is also by dividing by 100. So let's say 532 and 4 tenths divided by 100. What do we predict is going to happen with our decimal point when we divide by 100? I'm thinking that it's going to make our decimal point move two spaces to the right. So let's test it. Remember, we want our decimal points to line up. 100 does not go into 5 or 53, but it goes into 532 five times with a remainder of 32. And we bring down our 4. It goes into 324 three times with a remainder of 24. We add a zero, bring it down. It goes into 240 two times with a remainder of 40. Add a zero, bring it down, and it goes into 404 times with no remainder. Ran out of space too, so good. Okay, so 532 and 4 tenths, when we divide it by 100, we get 5 and 324 thousandths. What do we see, fifth graders? Two spaces to the left. Our prediction seems to be working. So if we were going to divide by 1,000, what's your prediction? Hopefully you're thinking one, two, three spaces to the left. I'm gonna whip through this one very quickly just to test our theory and then we're gonna move forward. So it doesn't go into three or into four or, sorry, or 34 or 342, but it does go into 3,425 three times with a remainder of 425. Add a zero, bring it down. How many times? Four times with a remainder of 250. Add a zero, bring it down. How many times? Two times with a remainder of 500. Bring down our zero and five times <clears throat> with a remainder of zero. So take a look. Did it seem to be true? Three spaces to the left. One, two, three, sure did. So fifth graders, seems that we have a pattern we can follow and we do not need to be doing our long division. So let's take our notes. This is on the back side of our multiplying by tens, hundreds, thousands. So when a decimal is divided by 10, we move the decimal point one place to the left. So we want to think multiplication and division are opposites. Right and left are opposites. So we're doing the opposite or inverse operation. When a decimal is divided by 100, we move the decimal point two places to the left. And when we divide a decimal by 1,000, we move that decimal point three places to the left. So this is the rule that we're going to apply today. I've mentioned this already. I don't want you actually writing out any long division. I did that to really demonstrate our main concept for today, but we're going to just be going through moving decimal points. That's all we need to be doing today. So you should have some paper handy. If you want to get out your textbook, 
and open up to page 28. And we're just going to practice this concept together, page 28. So starting with number one, I'm going to probably demonstrate mm, the first row. Then I'm going to be kind of guiding you through trying the other ones, okay? So 1A, something that's good to remember as we're doing this as well, fifth graders, is that here we're dividing by 10. And we know the rule. When you divide by 10, you move that decimal point one to the left. However, you might be looking at this and saying, but there is no decimal point. So remember that with whole numbers, there isn't a decimal point, but we can imagine that there's one there, right? Because eight is the same as 8.0 or 8.00 or 8.000. So we'll have to do some imagining here in order to make this happen. So eight divided by 10, we add that decimal point, one to the left, and we end up with eight tenths. And remember, I've been telling you this, you wanna make sure you have a zero before your decimal point, okay? We don't wanna just say 0.8, we wanna see a zero here because it's the proper way of expressing our decimals, okay? B, we're dividing eight tenths by 10. So again, one to the left, so we end up with 800. So you can see how the decimal point was between the zero and the eight, but now we move it over one to the left and we have to put it between these two zeros. C is asking us to divide eight hundredths by 10. So we move our decimal point one to the left to get eight thousandths. So you can see, right, if we look, the decimal point's a good cue. Over here, we had a decimal point, zero, eight, and so now we have to have a decimal point, zero, zero, eight. You also might have been noticing that we're adding a zero, because again, we want to keep having a zero on the left of our decimal point. So fifth graders, I know usually we do some more practice together, but I think you're ready to try D, E, and F on your own. So go ahead and pause, try D, E, and F. Also, you don't necessarily have to write the division problem out if you can do it in your head. That's great, but if you're writing on the problem, you'll want to copy it down. So give it a try. Come on back and see how you did. So as you're looking at D, 2 divided by 10, remember we have to imagine that there's a decimal point on the right side of the 2. We move it 1 to the left, and you get 2 tenths. 2 tenths divided by 10. Remember, we go 1 space to the left to get 2 hundredths. Two hundredths divided by 10. Remember one space to the left to get two thousandths. Check carefully, make sure you have your two in the correct place value because that'll make all the difference for your answer. How'd you do? Did that go okay? Hopefully you guys are, it's uh, coming a little clearer. Okay. Give G, H, and I a try now. Go ahead and pause and try those and then come on back and see how you did. So we should be noticing a bit of a pattern here, right? Again, we add that decimal point, we move it one to the left and we get six tenths. Okay, now we're going one to the left to get six hundredths. And again, one to the left to get six thousandths. So hopefully, fifth graders, this is feeling like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm understanding this, I'm following. But again, if you're feeling like, ooh, I'm not sure I totally understand what she's saying, then of course, reach out, we can chat. I'd love to meet with you and chat a little bit about this, okay? So remember, for our objective, we're dividing by tens and hundreds and thousands. So far, we've only tried our tens, so we're going to move on to try our hundreds. Mm, I'm just misleading. I got, I got ahead of myself. We're actually going to look at number four down here now. Okay, so we'll try a couple together and a couple on our own. Thank you as you're letting me bumble my way a little bit. So 4A, 23 hundredths divided by 10. So here we have the number written out. And remember, the same thing. We're just moving that decimal point one to the left. So now to the right of this decimal point should be zero two, three, right? How about B? We're dividing by 10. 
we're moving that decimal point one to the left. So now our decimal point zero four five, right? Or 45 thousandths, okay? Why don't you pause and try C on your own and see how it goes. One to the left. Sorry, I should have said divided by 10. So you get 12 thousandths or decimal point zero one two. Good. Let's try D and E together and then I'll have you do F on your own. Two and five tenths divided by 10. So one to the left. 25 hundredths. Six and eight tenths divided by 10. One to the left gets you 68 hundredths. Pause, try F. Come on back and see how you did. One to the left means you should have 53 hundredths. Hopefully it's starting to catch on a little bit. Okay, let's try G and H together and then I'll have you try I on your own. So we're back to what decimal point do we move to the left? Remember that decimal point is at the end of your whole number, okay? So one to the left gets you one and two tenths. 39 divided by 10, same thing. We have to imagine that our decimal point is at the end of our whole number, so one to the left gets us three and nine tenths. Why don't you pause, try I, come on back and see how you did. So again, you should have imagined that your decimal point is at the end of 103. One to the left, we get 10 and 3 tenths. Now, fifth graders, we're going to try 100 and 1,000. I spoke too soon before. So we should be turning now to page 30. And this is going to go a bit quicker because hopefully the concept is a little bit more secure at this point. All right, we're looking at just number 11. I'm going to say, fifth graders, if you're feeling confident, go ahead, pause, try all six of them, and then come on back and see how you did, okay? If not, I'll walk you through a couple, and then I'll have you pause a little bit later. But either way, you'll get those answers when you're ready, okay? Okay, so 8 divided by 100. Remember, we still have to imagine that that decimal point is at the end of our whole number. So we go 1, 2 places. And so maybe you want to think about, well, and there has to be a 0 there. So we end up with 8 hundredths, okay? B, 90 divided by 100. Again, imagine that that decimal point is there. We're dividing by 100 now, right? So we're going to go 1, 2 to the left, which gets us 9 tenths. If you have not paused yet to try any on your own, then definitely try C now, and then come on back and see how you did. With C, fifth graders... There is a decimal point, so we can just move this one, two to the left. And again, we have to kind of imagine that there's that decimal point, or that that zero there, and make sure we put our decimal point in the correct place. So we end up with 15 thousandths. Okay. Now we're dividing by 1,000, which means we need to move. We see three zeros, so we have to move three places to the left with our decimal point. Okay. So again, with a whole number, we have to imagine that it's after the whole number. One, two, three to the left. So we end up with four thousandths. 200 divided by 1,000. Again, we imagine this decimal point and we say one, two, three. So this is two tenths. Now maybe fifth graders, you're thinking about writing 200 thousandths, right? Because you see these two zeros, two zeros. But remember, we're practicing getting rid of any unnecessary zeros at the end of our decimal. 
If you have not paused to try any division by a thousand on your own, do so now and then come on back and see how you did. So remember, we're imagining that that decimal point is at the end of our whole number. One, two, three spaces to the left and we end up with 324 thousandths. All right, we're gonna try one more type of problem. It is not in your textbook, but it is a type of problem that you will see in your workbook. So I wanna make sure that you have a chance to take a look at it. So we did problems like this with multiplication. We just have to kind of think it through a little bit. So for instance, you might see something that looks like um, five and 82 hundredths divided by what equals 582 thousandths, okay? So you have to compare these two numbers and figure out how many places did your decimal point move? So one thing I might consider is, look at your right-handed side here and say, where was the decimal point when I started? It was between the five and the eight. So how many places did it have to move to get to the answer? We went from here to here, so that's one place. So we want one zero here, okay? Or maybe you see 72 divided by what equals 72 thousandths. So again, where did the decimal point start? Remember with whole numbers, we assume it's at the end of the whole number. So think here, one, two, three. How many places did it move? Three, so we need three zeros, okay? How about, hmm, five and 18 hundredths divided by what? I'm gonna make this hard on you, but it's you could do it. Equals uh, 518 ten thousandths. So again, where did the decimal point start? Here, one, two. So two zeros in our answer. Okay, 700 divided by what equals 7 tenths? So in this case, you might want to add a couple zeros here, right? Because we're looking at 700, so 700. One, two, three. Okay, so divided by 1,000, three spaces, three zeros. Let's try like two more maybe. Okay, um, 84 divided by what equals eight and four tenths. So where did the decimal point start? We went one to the left, so that's equal to 10. Okay, let's see, 782 divided by what equals 782 thousandths. So where did it start? Three spaces, so we divide by 1,000, okay? So when you guys get to your workbook problems, you're gonna see a couple of problems like this. So you wanna make sure you understand that as well. Okay, so we're kind of at like checkpoint one as we talk about, right? Um, how are things going, right? If you're feeling good about it, you can move forward with practice, but if this is a little tricky, then come see me, come see another teacher during office hours and we can talk through it. If you're feeling good, you go on to that practice work, once you're done, you can use the key to check your practice work, okay? Then try to make corrections. If that's going well, you're ready to go on to your homework. If not, then you should come to office hours as well. So your practice work is an attachment to this assignment that you can work on on any piece of paper with the key as well. And your homework is going to be page 17 in your workbook, which is gonna have a whole lot of what, like what we've just been working on in our lesson today. As always, if you have questions, reach out, we're here to help. Um, good luck, fifth graders.